Hello, this is feedback for Joe Doran and his character Natalie. Um, Natalie's a, a really interesting character that I felt had got a lot of potential for development. Um, but the first thing I wanted to address was that um, Natalie is described very much here in the context of her relationship. And um, whilst that's a really, there's a, it's a really good description of the relationship, um, I think that's slightly problematic because it's, it's quite difficult to um, see Natalie in her own right. I think I would recognise Natalie if in, in that context, but I wouldn't necessarily recognise her um, separately from the, the, the relationship. Um, you know, it's, as I said, it's a, it's a good relationship description, um, a symbiotic relationship, strong Natalie, weak Stephen, but with a lot of, of undercurrents there. Um, however, I think we need to then think about Natalie um, herself. Um, she's described as an only child um, in the first line. Is, that, is this significant? Um, is there an assumption that being an only child is what's led her to always wanting her own way and um, being a stubborn person, or is that a coincidence? Um, there's a lot of emphasis here on Natalie's need to control um, what's led to that? I kind of, I, I don't feel um, I understand what's brought Natalie to this place of, of needing to control Stephen. So absolutely, and also, um, is is that the same with her baby? I mean, is, does she does she have the same kind of relationship with her child that she does with, with Stephen in terms of needing to, to control her, her, everything? I think that's something which um, which could be um, fruitfully explored. Um, we're told that um, you know her social life revolves around um, doing stuff to, to make the Denise her, her baby happy. Um, is Natalie bored? Um, we're told she's a clever woman. Is she is she bored at home? Is she fed up with this homemaker role? Um, is that one of the factors that contributes to her constantly? harassing Stephen at work. I mean, you haven't used the word harassment, but um, I think uh, that may be what it, it feels like to the, uh, the person on the receiving end. Um, or is there something slightly more sinister driving this, uh, this need to, to constantly check up on Stephen? There's a throwaway remark at the, at the end of the description about Stephen's gambling. And I think this is um, a really um, kind of rich opportunity to um, to think about the the um, feelings that Natalie might have in relation to her husband and her situation. Does she know he's gambling? Um, has he previously has he had a history of a gambling problem and she's worried that this might resurface? Um, has she got a, a family history that's brought her to this worry? Um, which may be out of proportion um, or, or may be realistic. I think there's a, a lot that could be done here. You know, her, did her father have a history of gambling? So it's something she's always on the, the lookout for. Seems to be, um, because her behaviour seems to be um, quite um, exaggerated in relation to something that's just about getting your own way over a, a bank account. Um, or... Um, there's also a slight inference, I think, that she may be worried that Stephen's having an affair. You know, is, is she concerned that she's, you know, she's bored at home, that she's become boring? As a, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of women, when they're first at home with a, a young child, um, worry that their partner's going to lose interest in them. And, you know, is Natalie's behaviour starting to become a little bit desperate rather than, than controlling? Um, so I think... Um, there is um, a lot of opportunity within this description to work up um, a very interesting character um, that's multifaceted and um, would be really interesting um, for an actor to explore. Um, but I think in order to do that, um, Natalie does need to be separated out initially from her relationship with Stephen um, if you're going to get a really 
kind of 360 degree um, image of, of Natalie herself.